Welcome to an introduction to Spiliology, part two, Crazy About Caves, where we will learn about types of speleothems. This is presented by Lincoln Caverns and Whisper Rocks. When we venture into the darkness below the surface of the earth, we can see the results of the timeless labors of nature. Beauty can be found everywhere you look as speleothems project from the ceilings, walls, and floors of caves. No two are alike, yet they all follow a pattern. In the underground world, many features take on unusual shapes and forms, often resembling objects found above ground. Early explorers used their imagination and gave many types of speleothems common, everyday names according to what they looked like. The power of mineral-laden dripping water over thousands of years has created the spectacular and unique speleothems at the average rate of about a cubic inch for every 120 years of growth. The main mineral making up both the gray limestone surrounding the cave and the speleothems themselves is called calcite. Pure calcite is white in color, like the crystals in this picture. But what color are most of the cave formation? Browns and tans caused when impurities such as clay, dirt, and sand mix with and coat the calcite during formation of the speleothems. The reds and arges we see are most likely caused by deposits of iron oxide or rust. Colors other than white, browns, tans, oranges, reds, and the gray limestone bedrock are most likely due to other factors, such as colored lights or algae growth caused by the lights we've put in the caves. The way the water enters the cave helps determine the shape the speleothems take, the most common forming from dripping water. These fragile hollow tubes are named after something that you drink your milk through at lunch. Soda straws. Soda straws are beginning or first stage stalactites. They are so fragile, if you touch or bump them, they would probably break. They form down from the ceiling when water deposits a small amount of calcite in a ring on the ceiling. This process continues with one drop of water and one ring of calcite at a time. Eventually, water also begins to drip down the outside of the soda straw, resulting in the most common of all speleothems, a stalactite. Here's a close-up of the tip of a soda straw. The crystals are normally too small to see, but this is a perfect example of how the calcite crystals form together in speleothems. The most common of all speleothems are carrot-shaped and called stalactites. The C in the middle of the word will help you remember that stalactites form down from the ceiling. When drippage falls to the floor from the stalactites above, 
It is deposited in the form of stalagmite. What is it called when a stalactite and a stalagmite grow together? It's a hard word to remember. But we call them columns, just like columns we find in buildings. What does this remind you of? It reminds me of the shape of a waterfall, known as flowstone. Since it reminds us of flowing water, they form when a lot of water flows over walls, floors, and older formations, building up sheets of the mineral calcite, like icing on a cake. Sometimes the crystals in flowstone are larger than normal, showing through the outside coating, causing a sparkling effect. This is called macrocrystalline or big crystals. These are named after something you might have hanging in your windows at home. We call them cave ribbons, curtains, or cave drapery. Cave drapery hangs in delicate folds, forming when water drips down a slanted wall or ceiling in a cave. Some are so thin that they resemble ribbon candy and are translucent. The light shines through them. Well, this is a special form of cave drapery containing deposits of iron oxide or rust. It resembles and is named after a common breakfast food. Cave bacon. These remind us of miniature dams. Rimstone dams are barriers of calcite which obstruct a cave stream or pool, forming when more rapidly moving water deposits calcite in the form of a lip of a dam. Microgowers are miniature rimstone dams forming on the surface of flowstones caused by splashing water depositing the calcite in the form of a dam, much like the larger rimstone dam. One of the most interesting types of speleothems is also one of the rarest, cave pearls. They generally have a nucleus, which could be simply a, a grain of sand. Concentric layers of calcite surround the nucleus, laid down in much the same way as layers are deposited on an oyster pearl. Some speleothems form when water seeps out between cracks in the limestone walls of caves and resemble a food we eat at the movies. Cave popcorn. Under their outside coating, these clusters of calcite crystals resemble diamonds. With the coloring of iron oxide, popcorn is also known as cave coral. These large knobby clusters also form on the walls of caves. When water drips down over their outside, giving them a smooth, round shape. They're named after a small round fruit. We call them cave grapes. The scientific term is botroid, which is a Greek word that means a cluster of grapes. They form on the surfaces of speleothems as well as the walls of the cave. One of the most fascinating and delicate of all speleothems are these small, twisted, hollow tubes made up of calcite crystals which form down, up, and straight out from the walls, ceilings, and floors of caves. They are nicknamed after something we see growing in the springtime. Cave flowers. The water moves so slowly a pressure builds up inside, and these cave flowers or helictite seem to defy the law of gravity. Helictite is a Greek word that means twisted. 
These are by no means the only shapes that speleothems take, just some of the more common ones. You will see examples of all of these except cave pearls when you visit Lincoln Caverns and Whisper Rocks. But even more important than remembering the names of the speleothems, we must respect the cave environment and abide by the rules of being a good cave visitor. What is the most important thing to remember about the speleothems when you visit a cave? Yes, that's right, not to touch them. If even a small piece is damaged, it can never be replaced. There is a special reason we should never touch wet or active speleothems. The oils on our skin would make them slippery, causing the water to slide off without depositing the minerals, thus causing them to quit forming. Dry speleothems are inactive or no longer forming. When they dry up, air replaces water in between the crystals. This causes them to develop cracks, becoming brittle, and they could break very easily. Thank you for joining us today. Check out the speleothem activities available from your teacher. They can be found in the teacher's area at lincolncaverns.com. And our favorite cave craft is a cardboard box cave using simple materials, and a few food items that you probably have or can get very easily. In a few minutes, we'll demonstrate how to make a cardboard box cave. 